thank you for joining the call on tonight. Um, as some of you know, I usually join these calls with a few PowerPoint slides and some scriptures and just sort of a summary of things that God has been talking about or dealing with me about. And tonight, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some things that are on my heart. I don't have a presentation to share. I don't necessarily have scriptures outlined to share. Uh, but I do want to share my heart in terms of things that God has really just revealed to me this week during prayer time and, and that type of thing. Um, forgive me for that. I just need to mute my phone. Um, but the main thing I want to bring out tonight is just the aspect of faith. As you all know, I love to teach. I do believe that we need to get an understanding of scripture. The Bible says in all of our getting that we could get an understanding. So I am very enthusiastic about learning, about teaching, all of that stuff. And I don't want to discredit any of that. Um, but we must not ever forget about faith. And that's just kind of what I want to uh, talk a little bit about tonight and just kind of share the heart of God in terms of where the body of Christ lies and how we need to get back to a place of faith. So as I said, absolutely, we need understanding. We need to be able to understand scripture. We need to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. But what I'm finding and what many of us are seeing in this generation is that knowledge is so readily available to us that we feel the need to understand everything completely before we believe God for anything. And it just doesn't work that way. The scriptures tell us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is not knowledge that draws us closer to the Father. It is our faith. And our faith is based on what he has told us. It's based on his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What that means is our faith is not at all dependent on fact. Our faith is not at all dependent even on knowledge, and I can prove that. Many of us, probably some of you who are here on the line, when you were a little child, you believed in a man named Santa Claus, or you believed in something called a tooth fairy, or you believed in something called a boogeyman. <laughs> all of these things you believed in so much so that you might lose sleep on some nights, so much so that you were just, you knew that whatever you wrote in that letter to Santa, it was going to come on December 25th. Whatever the case may be, you believed it and you believed it so much that you began to pattern your life after that belief. But now, as you are older, you understand that you believed a lie. What made it a lie is the fact that it is not factual. It's not the truth. It cannot be proven. It is not real, yet you still believed it. That proves that faith is not based only on fact and knowledge. We have faith in a lot of things that we don't understand. When I turn on my light, I have faith that my lights are going to come on. But truth be told, if you drop me in the middle of woods, even though I technically understand how electricity works from science classes and so forth, if you drop me off in the middle of the woods, I would not be able to duplicate electricity. I would not be able to create it. I would not be able to fit, figure out how to work lights or how to create lights. I would be dependent on fire and maybe a candle or a stick with a flame on the end. I would not be able to duplicate it. We as the body of Christ have got to get back to the place where we are willing to just believe God even when we don't understand everything about what he's doing even when we cannot explain every single iota, we have got to get back to a place where we believe God. Why? Because he's already been faithful. Jeremiah in the book of Lamentations, he says, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope, therefore I have faith. It's because of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. His mercies are new every morning. And he says, great is your faithfulness. In other words, I believe God because of who God is and what God has already done, not because I can explain God. I believe God because he has a track record. He cannot lie, not because I can duplicate what God does. Our faith is based on the word of God, and since his word cannot come void, since he cannot lie, then everything that he says is, and that's why we have faith. Again, not because we can explain it. 
not because we always understand it. And in this Google age, we've got to be so very careful because people are literally walking away from God based on something that they Googled when they have no idea of the integrity of the person who wrote that article that they just wrote or they just read. We have no idea of their integrity or the lack thereof, but because the information is in front of us, we would choose to believe a lie instead of standing on our faith. And we've got to get back to the place where our relationship with God draws us into his power and into his love and into his authority to the point that we just believe God. Those of you who know me personally, you know that I love my husband. I cannot explain to you his thought processes. I cannot explain to you why he does many of the things that he does. It still baffles me to this day after 15 plus years of marriage. I will never be able to duplicate what's taking place in his mind, and I'll never potentially be able to make sense of it. But I know that there are certain things he's going to be faithful to do. Why can I have faith in him? I can have faith in him because of his history, and I can have faith in him because of our relationship. I trust that he loves me enough to do certain things and to do them well, and I count on that. I bank on that. I don't sit back and decide, well, can I explain why? <laughs> and while there are certain things that I want to learn about him, and while there are things that I need to understand about him, most of that comes through relationship. I don't leave my husband's presence to go and find a biography that somebody wrote and read that and feel like I'm more knowledgeable of who he is. I get to know him based on relationship, and we've got to get back to the place where we treat God the same way. You are never going to know him by reading about him the way you will know him by being intimate with him, by being in his presence by staying on your faith and listening for the voice of God, by understanding the heartbeat of God and understanding his person and his desires and what he wants us to do in this earth. We cannot excuse worship with knowledge. Knowledge puffs up and information will never take us to the place in God where we need to be. So it's important that we learn to balance and it's important that we get back to the place in the body of Christ. Now, Certainly, the Bible says we got to be careful. We have a responsibility to seek out the fruit. We have a responsibility to judge the fruit. We have a responsibility to make sure that we are not submitting ourselves to false teachers, to false prophets, to false teachings. Absolutely. And the way we know whether or not something is true is first the unction of the Holy Spirit and then also the written word of God. Does it line up? I'm not excusing us from that precaution, but what I'm saying is so many of us have grown dismissive of everything that we can't explain, <laughs> that we're really explaining away the very thing that we've asked God for. We're praying that God show us a miracle, but when the miracle comes, if we can't explain it, then we dismiss it. It wasn't God. <laughs> we ask God to make provision where there's no way, but when God provides and we can't explain it, then we dismiss it and we miss God. God is supernatural. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And so we've got to stop trying to make God logical. He's not logical. He's spiritual. And with our logic, we're never going to impress God. If you don't believe me, when you get opportunity, go and read the entirety of Hebrews chapter 11. Some of us call this the faith chapter, especially those of us that came up in the quote unquote old school church, right? We understand that, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then after that, you learn that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You learn Hebrews chapter 11. But if you go back to Hebrews chapter 11 and read beyond, you'll see the Bible says, for example, in verse 5 of Enoch, it was by faith that Enoch was taken to heaven without dying. It wasn't by work. It wasn't by knowledge. It wasn't by education. It wasn't by paying tithes. It wasn't by sitting under a certain leader. It wasn't even by serving a leader. It was by faith. God ordained the thing, and Enoch believed it enough to follow suit and to be in place. Therefore, he saw the miracle and not only saw it, but became a part of it. It's by faith that Noah built the ark. In other words, God spoke, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God spoke, Noah obeyed, in other words, he worshiped, and thereby his faith was exercised. 
It's by faith that Abraham obeyed God. And the Bible says it's counted unto him as righteousness, not by works. So many of us are trying to impress God by works. It's by faith. It's by faith that we're saved. And absolutely, we show our faith by our works. But it's not the works that justify it. It's the faith. The works only prove that the faith is in place. So we can't rely on the works and stop there. There are a lot of people doing work. But you can work and not have a bit of faith in the world. And what a, a terrible way to spend your entire life when you only get one. It's by faith that Sarah was able to give birth. All of these things, the Bible says, it was by faith. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessing for his sons, Jacob and Esau. It's all by faith. It was by faith, the Bible says, that Jacob, Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's of Joseph sons. It was by faith. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. It was by faith. Every miracle that we read about in the word of God is by faith. So if we as God's people don't live by faith, but we live by fact, only. We live by knowledge only. We live by emotion. We live by um, uh, education. We live by whatever someone leads us to live by. If we never exercise faith, we never meet God. We never please God. And so all I'm saying on tonight is that we really need to get back to a place of balance in the body of Christ. Now, I know that, you know, <laughs> you can be off balance in the other direction, too. That's why the Bible says that God loves a just balance. God knows that we are, we are extremists when it comes to our activities, right? Because we like check boxes as people. <laughs> as human beings, we like to be able to say, yep, did this, did that, I'm done. We like check boxes, and that's an extreme view. But God likes a just balance. I remember what it was like. Uh, being in some of the old school churches when I was younger, and everything was by faith. Nothing was by knowledge. Sometimes you didn't hear any scripture at all. <laughs> People would jump around and pray and worship God and, you know, believe God for certain things. Everything was by faith. And as I began to get familiar with the word of God, I realized that some of the things we were believing God for and the way we were, quote, unquote, believing God was not scriptural. But... God honored those things, and I'm just speaking on Joy's life. This, this is Joy's testimony. There were many things I did in faith when I was young that I later found out were erroneous, but God loved me so much that he met me where my faith was. Even though I was in error, when I had the right motives and was seeking the face of God in my process of maturity, God loved me so much that he still met me where my faith was. That is extremely powerful because what that says to me is, God, you will meet me where my place of faith is before you will meet me where my place of knowledge is. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. So we have to be careful as we're gaining more knowledge that we don't forget our faith. I remember giving my last before I understood that that money should have been to pay bills, and God honored it. I remember not studying when I was in, in college, studying biostatistics and pre-med, these crazy classes. I remember not studying because my faith was in the fact that if I spend that time in prayer, God will bring back the information that I need to know. Now, today when I take a class, Joy knows better. But back then, my faith was at that level. My knowledge was maybe a little bit naive, but because my faith was through the roof, God did it. And we've got to begin, even as the body of Christ, as we are passing mantles onto our children and to the next generation, we've got to stop giving them the excuse that if you cannot explain it, you don't have to live by it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense when we say it's better to give than to receive, but that is the word of God. And because it is the word of God, whether I can explain it or not, I will live by it. I will stand on it. And you know what? The blessings will come back. Some of us, we are so miserable at this point because we are paralyzed. 
We are, we won't do anything unless it makes sense. And as a result, right now, your relationship with God is dwindling away. Right now, your relationship with God is strained. And you're saying, God, I don't understand. I'm trying to get to a different place in you. I'm trying to, to understand you. I'm trying to, to communicate with you. And God is saying, but even to reach me, you got to have faith because I don't make sense. I can't be explained with a science book. You can't Google me and figure out how I work. People of God, we can look at the sun come up every morning, and science can explain to us why the sun comes up, why it's yellow, why it warms the earth, why it comes up at certain times, on what side of the earth it comes up on, what side of the earth it goes down on. Science can explain all of that. Yet at the end of the day, science can't duplicate it. See, the power is not in the knowledge. <laughs> the sun was created by faith. God spoke, and it was so. God speaks, and it is so. It was created by faith. Science explains it, but science can't create it. And many of us in our daily walks with the Father, we are trying to create things with our understanding. Understanding is there to help us appreciate. But understanding is not going to create anything of value. The only thing that we can do with understanding is duplicate something that's already there. <laughs> we can clone. We can copy cells in a Petri dish and, and, you know, put them in someone's body to recreate. You know, we can do all kinds of things. But we can't create the substance of life. We can't create what God has created. We can't do it. Our understanding is for appreciation. When he says, in all of your getting, get an understanding, what he's saying is, realize how vast I am. Realize how in-depth I am. Look at the pattern. There's no way that man could have done this. If man could have done it, then they would have. But I am God. Be still and know it. <laughs> Glory to God. Be still and know that I am God. That takes faith. So I just want to encourage you all on tonight, continue to get your understanding, continue to study, continue to read your word, but please don't allow the enemy to trick you into walking away from your faith. Please do not get to the place where doubt is so planted in you that you refuse to receive anything from God that you cannot explain or do yourself. If that is the case, then you are your own God. And that is a scary place to be. That's a scary place to be. And I'm ashamed to say that we're seeing it more and more in the body of Christ, where there's just a thirst for knowledge. And we have to be careful. The Bible says that in the last days, that people are going to look and thirst after their own knowledge. They're going to look for teachers who will teach the things that will, will fulfill their itching ears. People are hungry for knowledge because they want to feel good about themselves. But we got to be careful. We've got to be careful that we do not become those who have itching ears, who are seeking after information so that we can be right, not so we can be righteous, but so that we can be right, so that we can win an argument, so that we can look a certain way, so that people will look up to us, so that we'll have a platform. We've got to be careful that we do not get our priorities mixed up. Nothing replaces faith. It is by faith that we are saved. It is by faith that we connect to the Father through Jesus Christ. It's by faith that you are able to proclaim the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you just want to get into facts, you'll spend the rest of your life digging through archaeological artifacts and information and Googling this and looking up that. You'll, feel, you'll, you'll spend the rest of your life. And here's the thing that we've got to understand. God is the keeper of all mysteries. The Bible says that he draws us unto himself. We've got to realize that the mysteries of God are not available to everybody. They are available to those who have faith in him. Even when Jesus was teaching his disciples, he said to them, you have been given 
the understanding of the mysteries of heaven. But these other people, I have to talk to them in parables. I need to give them something to think about. It's got to make sense to them. But you, you are engaged because of your faith, and therefore you have understanding. Sometimes that understanding doesn't mean that I know the facts. It just means that it is well with me. It agrees with me. The Holy Spirit on the inside agrees with that word, and I can walk it out as if it is so because it is so. That is faith, and that's where God is calling us back to where we are a people who are full of love and full of fervency and full of zeal. Many of us are tired and we're run down because we're spending too much time depending on our own intellect. And while we are called to be like him, our minds are not where his mind is. <laughs> we don't have the capacity that an omniscient God has. And so, again, I just want to encourage us on tonight, don't lose your faith. And please, as you are discipling others, don't teach them out of faith. And again, those that know me, you know, I love education. I love to study the word. I, I like to get into the nitty gritty and get into the history and all that good stuff, even the etymology. I love it all. But I'm telling you, it's not worth sacrificing your faith. It's not worth sacrificing your faith. In fact, when your relationship with God is intact, the more you know, the more it just solidifies your faith. The more it makes you sit back and say, wow, God, that's deep. Only you could have done this. And we can study it for years and years and years and years and never get to the place where you are. I apologize for the background noise. I think that's my phone. My father is texting me. <laughs> But we have got to get to a place, people of God, where we walk by faith, not by knowledge, not by intellect, but we walk by faith. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to just uh, pause here. If there are any comments or questions or uh, anything else on this topic before we jump into prayer requests.